The Hirogen Emperor's body trembled with barely contained rage as the Zarath clan assassin spoke the unthinkable words. Admiral Ethan Powell would live. For now. Emperor Kalar had offered the alien assassins a king's ransom to eliminate the famed Terran Alliance hero, to send a message that would shatter humanity's relentless expansion across the galaxy. But Akron, the Zarath clan leader, had cited an ancient, unbreakable oath. No Zarath blade would ever spill human blood, not even for all the wealth in the cosmos. Kellar clenched his fists, talons drawing purple blood from his palms, as impotent fury burned in his chest. To be denied by mere crude killers for hire was a humiliation he could scarcely endure. But the warrior king was not yet beaten. If the Zarath assassins would not snuff out humanity's brightest star, Kaler would seize the admiral himself and break the human in his own torture chambers, until Powell revealed the source of the Zarath clan's incomprehensible loyalty to his species. Within a dozen solar cycles, a hydrogen strike force fell upon Admiral Powell's diplomatic convoy like a swarm of void wasps. The admiral's shuttlecraft was disabled, boarded, and gutted stem to stern. A hundred Terran corpses drifted in the silent wreckage. Powell was gone, dragged off in chains to the heart of the Hirogen Empire. When word reached Terra Prime, the Alliance's fury was terrible to behold. Battle fleets mustered, armies gathered. Doomsday weapons were primed and loaded into torpedo tubes. The galaxy itself seemed to hold its breath, waiting for the two juggernauts to collide. In his blackest cells, Kalar's mindbreakers worked tirelessly on Admiral Powell, attacking his iron will with drugs, neuroscourges, psychic assaults, and other depravities better left unspoken. The Hyrogen Emperor needed to know the truth behind the Zarath assassin's allegiance to humanity before the rapidly massing Alliance warships arrived on his doorstep. Because when they did come, and they would, like an implacable wall of genocidal steel, Kalar knew that only the Zarath clan would have a chance in hell of saving his empire from the unrestrained wrath of mankind. In the obsidian depths of the Harrigan dungeons, Admiral Powell's screams echoed off the cold stone walls as Emperor Kalar's mind-breakers plied their sadistic trade. Neuroscourges slithered over the Admiral's sweat-slick skin, injecting their venom directly into his pain centers. Psychic probes wormed into his skull, clawing at the edges of his sanity. But through it all, through the agony and the delirium, Powell held fast to his defiance, spitting blood and broken teeth at his captors. Emperor Kalar watched the interrogation through a one-way transparisteel panel, his talons click-click-clicking against the polished surface. Beside him, Zorin, the gaunt-faced intelligence chief, studied Powell's vital signs on a flickering hollow display. He is resilient, this one, Zorin murmured. His mind is an iron fortress. It will take time to break him. Kellar growled low in his throat. Time is a luxury we do not have. The Terran fleets are already massing at our borders. We must know the truth of the Zarath clan's loyalty before they arrive. As the torture dragged on, hour bleeding into hour, Kalar found himself grudgingly impressed by Powell's fortitude. The human endured torments that would have shattered a lesser being, and yet his will remained unbroken. What was it about this species, Kalar wondered, that inspired such unwavering devotion from the galaxy's deadliest assassins? Far from the dungeons, in a shadowed corner of the Zarath clan's fortress monastery, Akron knelt before an ancient data vault, his fingers flying over the rune-carved keys. Beside him, Zasha, his most lethal and trusted lieutenant, kept watchful vigil, her mono-edged blade loose in its sheath. What is it you hope to find, Master? Zasha asked as glowing files and forgotten histories scrolled across the vault's hollow display. Akron's eyes never left the screen. Answers, Zasha. Answers to a mystery that has haunted our clan for generations. An unpaid debt that binds us to humanity's fate. Deep in the vault's archives, buried beneath layers of encryption and millennia of digital dust, a single file flickered to life. An image formed, a human starship, battered and broken, drifting in the endless night of space. Beside it, a Zarath clan vessel, sleek and predatory. A tether of shimmering energy bound the two ships together. Akron's breath caught in his throat as he read the file's timestamp. By the ancestors, he whispered. 
This is no mere historical record. This is a live feed from the edge of Hirogen space. On the screen, a hatch opened on the Zareth ship's flank, and a dozen black-clad figures emerged, gliding across the vacuum on jets of compressed gas. They swarmed over the human vessel, cutting through its hull with laser scalpels and fusion torches. And then Akron saw it, emblazoned on the human ship's pitted flank, barely visible through the carbon scoring and battle damage, was a name, a name that sent a shudder of recognition through his entire being. TSS Prometheus The Terran strike team had arrived. The TSS Prometheus sliced through the inky void, its stealth systems rendering it nearly invisible against the backdrop of stars. Inside the ship's cramped bridge, Captain Volkov gripped the edge of the tactical display, his eyes fixed on the pulsing red dot that marked Admiral Powell's location. ETA to target, five minutes, the helmsman announced, his voice tight with tension. Volkov nodded, then turned to address his team. Remember, this is a surgical strike. We get in, extract the Admiral, and get out. No heroics, no unnecessary risks. As the Prometheus approached its destination, a sudden burst of static crackled over the comms. A voice, low and urgent, cut through the white noise. Captain Volkov, this is Zasha of the Zareth clan. We have vital intelligence to aid your mission. Volkov's hand instinctively went to his sidearm. How did you access this channel? There's no time to explain, Zasha replied. The facility where Admiral Powell is held has a blind spot in its sensor grid. I'm transmitting the coordinates now. True to her word, a stream of data flooded the Prometheus's systems. Volkov's tactical officer quickly confirmed its authenticity. It checks out, sir, she said, surprise evident in her voice. This will give us a clear approach vector. Volkov hesitated for a moment, weighing the risks. Then he made his decision. Helmsman, adjust course. We're going in. The Prometheus glided silently through the sensor blind spot, touching down on the facility's outer hull. Volkov led his team out into the vacuum, their mag boots clanking against the metallic surface. Inside the facility, Emperor Kalar paced before the transperisteel panel, his agitation growing with each passing moment. Zorin, he barked, report! The intelligence chief's fingers danced over his console. My emperor... I've detected an anomaly in our communications network. Someone has been transmitting classified data off-world. Kalar's eyes narrowed. A traitor? Who? Zorin's face paled. The transmissions? They're coming from Princess Arya's quarters. For a moment, Kalar stood frozen, disbelief warring with rage on his features. Then he spun towards his guards. Arrest her! Now! But even as the words left his mouth... Alarms began to blare throughout the facility. On the security feeds, Kalar watched in mounting fury as Volkov's team cut their way through his defenses, inexorably closing in on Admiral Powell's cell. In the depths of the prison block, Powell raised his head at the sound of plasma fire and shouted orders. A spark of hope kindled in his battered chest. The cell door exploded inward in a shower of molten metal. Through the smoke stepped Captain Volkov, his face grim but determined. Admiral, he said, extending a hand, it's time to go home. Powell grasped the offered hand, allowing Volkov to pull him to his feet. Took you long enough, Captain, he managed, his voice hoarse but tinged with relief. As they made their way through the corridors, alarms shrieking all around them, Powell noticed a black-clad figure flitting ahead of their group, clearing the path with lethal efficiency. Who's that? he asked Volkov. The captain's expression was unreadable. An unexpected ally. They were nearing the extraction point when a massive blast door slammed shut before them. From behind, the sound of heavy footsteps echoed off the walls. Powell, Emperor Kellar's voice boomed through the corridor. There's nowhere left to run. The Terran team turned, weapons raised, to face Kalar in his heavily armed security detail. For a heartbeat, the two groups stood frozen in a Mexican standoff. Then, like wraiths materializing from the shadows, a dozen Zarath assassins appeared, their monofilament blades gleaming in the harsh light of the corridor. Zasha stepped forward, her voice cold and clear. Emperor Kalar, by ancient oath and sacred duty, 
The Zarath clan stands with humanity. Stand down or face the consequences. Kalar's eyes darted from the assassins to Volkov's team and back again. His talons flexed as if yearning to strike, but even he could see the futility of further resistance. With a snarl of frustration, he lowered his weapon. This isn't over, Powell, he growled. As Volkov's team retreated to their ship, Powell couldn't shake the feeling that this rescue was just the beginning of something far larger. The galaxy was changing, alliances shifting like sand beneath their feet. And at the center of it all stood the enigmatic Zareth clan, their true motives still shrouded in mystery. The Terran strike team's daring rescue of Admiral Powell sent shockwaves through the galaxy. As news of the operation spread, both the Terran Alliance and Hydrogen Empire found themselves teetering on the brink of all-out war. Cooler heads prevailed, if only barely, as Admiral Powell and Emperor Kalar agreed to a temporary ceasefire and diplomatic talks on the neutral world of Andura. As the Terran flagship Intrepid dropped out of hyperspace above Andura, Powell stood at the viewport, his face a mask of concentration. The scars from his captivity had faded, but the memory of Kalar's torture chambers still haunted his dreams. Nervous, sir? Captain Volkov asked, joining him at the window. Powell's lips tightened. Cautious. This summit is our best chance to avoid a war that could tear the galaxy apart. But there are factions on both sides who'd rather see us fail. On the planet's surface, a sprawling conference center bustled with activity as the last preparations were made for the historic meeting. Security teams from a dozen neutral worlds patrolled the grounds, their uniforms a kaleidoscope of colors against Andura's muted landscape. As Powell's shuttle touched down on the landing pad, he caught sight of a familiar black-clad figure waiting at the foot of the ramp. Zasha, the Zarath assassin who had aided in his rescue, stood motionless as a statue. Admiral, she said, inclining her head slightly. Akron sends his regards and a warning. Powell tensed. What kind of warning? Our intelligence suggests a hydrogen separatist group plans to disrupt the summit violently. Before Powell could respond, a deafening explosion rocked the conference center. Alarms blared as panic screams filled the air. Through the chaos, Powell saw a swarm of shuttlecraft descending from orbit their hulls emblazoned with the blood-red insignia of General Zartok's separatist faction. Get to cover! Zasha shouted, shoving Powell behind a nearby barricade. Her monofilament blade sang as it left its sheath. The sky above Andura erupted in plasma fire as Zartok's forces engaged the planet's orbital defenses. On the ground, black-clad Zarath assassins materialized from hidden positions engaging the Separatist troops with lethal efficiency. Powell tapped his comm unit. This is Admiral Powell to all Alliance forces. We are under attack. Protect the Emperor at all costs. As if summoned by his words, Emperor Kalar's massive frame appeared through the smoke and debris, surrounded by a phalanx of Hirogen royal guards. The Emperor's eyes locked with Powell's, and for a moment the two leaders shared a look of grim understanding. Whatever their past differences, they were in this fight together. The battle raged for hours, turning Andura's pristine diplomatic quarter into a war-torn hellscape. But just as it seemed the tide was turning against Zartok's forces, a sickly green mist began to seep from canisters dropped by the retreating Separatist shuttles. Biogenic weapon, Kalar roared, his voice cutting through the din of combat. Everyone, seal your envirosuits! But it was too late. The contagion spread with terrifying speed, leaving swathes of combatants and civilians alike writhing on the ground in agony. Powell watched in horror as the green tendrils of mist crept toward the planet's population centers. Amid the chaos, Akron appeared, his face grim behind his breath mask. We must act quickly, he said, addressing both Powell and Kalar. My clan has experience with similar weapons. We can help develop a cure but we'll need resources from both your empires. Kalar's talons flexed, indecision warring on his face. Then, to Powell's surprise, the Hirogen Emperor nodded. Do what you must, he growled. This madness ends now. As emergency teams scrambled to contain the outbreak, Powell found himself working alongside his former captor and the enigmatic Zareth clan. The fate of millions hung in the balance, and the clock was ticking. 
In a makeshift lab on the outskirts of the capital, human, hydrogen, and Zarath scientists toiled around the clock. Powell watched as Akron poured over ancient Zarath medical texts, his fingers flying across holographic displays. This is eerily similar to an incident from our past, Akron muttered, more to himself than anyone else. The debt that bound us to humanity. Perhaps history truly does repeat itself. Before Powell could ask for clarification, alarms blared throughout the facility. On the main view screen, a recorded message from General Zartok played on a loop. You cannot stop what is coming, the Separatist leader snarled. The old orders will fall, and from the ashes, a new empire will rise. As the message faded, reports flooded in of renewed attacks across Endura. The summit hung by a thread, with hardliners on both sides calling for immediate retaliation. Powell knew that one wrong move could plunge the galaxy into a war from which there would be no return. With time running out and tensions at a breaking point, Powell, Kalar, and Akron found themselves facing a crucible that would test not only their leadership, but the very foundations of peace in the galaxy. Galaxy, the fragile peace accord, forged in the crucible of crisis, held firm, but only just. Months passed. The scars of battle on Andura faded, replaced by the hum of reconstruction. Admiral Powell stood at the viewport of the newly christened Galactic Accord Station, watching shuttles ferry diplomats to and from the orbiting facility. Quite a view, isn't it? Akron's voice came from behind him. Powell turned, nodding to the Zarath leader. A reminder of what we're fighting to preserve. As chief liaison for the Terran Alliance, Powell had spent countless hours in this room, poring over reports and mediating disputes. Akron, representing the Zarath observers, had become an unlikely ally in the struggle to maintain peace. Their conversation was interrupted by a priority alert. Powell's face darkened as he read the message. Zyrilla, he said, his voice tight. The Imperial Inquisitors struck a Zarath colony. Akron's normally impassive features twisted with rage. High Confessor Malkar, he spat the name like a curse. His faction opposes the peace at every turn. Before either could speak further, the station rocked with the force of an explosion. Alarms blared as acrid smoke filled the air. We're under attack, Powell shouted, drawing his sidearm. Through the chaos, a familiar figure materialized. Zasha, her monofilament blade already slick with blood. Inquisitor assassins, she reported. They've infiltrated the station. Powell's calm crackled to life. Admiral, it was Captain Volkov. A Hirogen battlecruiser just dropped out of hyperspace. They're jamming our transmissions. As if to punctuate Volkov's words, the viewport exploded inward. The void of space beckoned, held at bay only by the station's flickering emergency fields. Powell, Akron, and Zasha fought their way through burning corridors, dispatching Inquisitor agents with ruthless efficiency. They reached the main hangar just as a Terran frigate docked, disgorging a squad of armored marines. Evac protocols in effect, the squad leader bellowed. All personnel, prepare for immediate departure. As they boarded the frigate, Powell caught sight of the Hirogen battlecruiser through the hangar's force field. Its weapon ports glowed with building energy. Get us out of here, Powell ordered as the frigate's engines roared to life. They barely cleared the hangar before emerald beams lanced out from the Hyrogen ship, carving the Accord station into molten fragments. In the frigate's cramped bridge, Powell turned to Akron. This changes everything, he said grimly. Akron nodded, his eyes reflecting the fiery destruction visible on the main view screen. The Inquisitors have made their move. Now we make ours. As the frigate jumped to hyperspace, carrying them away from the smoldering ruins of peace, Powell knew the real battle was only beginning. The galaxy teetered on the brink of all-out war, with the lives of billions hanging in the balance. In the depths of Hirogen space, High Confessor Malkar watched recorded footage of the Accord Station's destruction. A cruel smile played across his features as he turned to address his inner circle. The cleansing has begun, he intoned. Prepare the bioweapon for deployment. It's time to show the galaxy the true meaning of purity. Purity. Malkar's eyes gleamed with fanatical intensity as he turned to his chief scientist. Dr. Vex, status report on the bioweapon. 
the hunched Hirogen tapped a series of commands into his data pad. The mutagenic agent is primed for deployment, High Confessor. Our carriers are en route to Zarek as we speak. Across the galaxy, on the Zareth homeworld of Zarek, Dr. Maya Gonzalez peered through a microscope at a tissue sample. Her lab coat was rumpled, dark circles under her eyes betraying sleepless nights of research. This pathogen, it's like nothing I've ever seen, she muttered, rubbing her temples. A thunderous explosion rocked the building. Maya stumbled, catching herself on the edge of the lab bench. Alarms blared as the acrid smell of smoke filled the air. Dr. Gonzalez! Zasha burst through the door, her monofilament blade dripping with fresh blood. We need to move. Now! Maya hesitated, her eyes darting to the samples and data crystals scattered across her workstation. Zasha growled in frustration. There's no time. The city's descending into chaos. They sprinted through corridors choked with panicked researchers and security personnel. Outside, the sky burned orange, punctuated by the staccato of weapons fire. The quarantine's failing, Maya gasped as they reached a waiting skimmer. If we can't contain it... Her words were cut off by a deafening roar. A massive Hirogen dropship descended through the clouds, disgorging waves of battle-armored troops. Go! Zasha barked at the pilot. The skimmer lurched into the air, weaving between streams of plasma fire. Maya's comm unit crackled to life. Doctor, this is Admiral Powell. What's your status? Bad, she replied, watching pillars of smoke rise from Zarek's capital. The Inquisitor's bioweapon is spreading faster than we can analyze it. We need more time. Time is the one thing we don't have, Powell's voice was grim. Akron's gone to consult the Zareth Grand Master. With any luck, he'll find something to give us an edge. Deep within the labyrinthine halls of the Zareth Sanctuary, Akron knelt before a withered figure draped in ornate robes. Rise, my child. Grandmaster Kaleth's voice was barely above a whisper. I sense the weight of destiny upon you. Akron stood, his normally stoic features etched with urgency. Master, our people face extinction once more. I seek your wisdom. Kaleth raised a gnarled hand, silencing him. The answers you seek lie within the Zarkalini Codex. Akron's eyes widened. The Codex? But it's been lost for centuries. Not lost, Kaleth corrected. Hidden, protected. It rests at the heart of the Nexus, guarded by trials that have claimed the lives of many who sought its power. On New Boston, the Terran capital world, Admiral Powell stood before a sea of holographic displays. Reports of unrest and political maneuvering flooded in from a dozen sectors. Sir, Captain Volkov approached, his face a mask of concern. Senator Ivanov's faction is calling for your resignation. They claim your soft stance on the Hirogen led to this crisis. Powell's face hardened. He took a deep breath, weighing his options. After a moment, he nodded to himself. Decision made. Volkov, I'm promoting you to... Rear Admiral. You'll take command of the 7th Fleet. He tapped a command into his data pad. And get me Victor Petrov. It's time we remind everyone what's really at stake here. Light years away on Andura... Princess Arya ran through the opulent halls of the Imperial Palace. The sounds of battle echoed from every direction as loyalist and rebel forces clashed. A plasma bolt seared the air inches from her head. Arya dove behind a fallen statue, her heart pounding. She was alone, cut off from her guards. Your Highness, a black-clad figure materialized beside her, one of Akron's Zareth assassins. This way, we must get you to safety. As they fled through secret passages, Arya couldn't help but marvel at the cruel irony. Once again, it was the Zareth who came to humanity's aid in its darkest hour. Back on Zarek, Maya and her team worked feverishly in a makeshift lab, racing against time to unravel the secrets of the Inquisitor's bioweapon. Outside, the sounds of rioting grew louder. Dr. Gonzalez, one of her assistants called out, voice trembling, you need to see this. On a view screen, Footage from orbit showed a swarm of hydrogen ships converging on the planet. At their center, a massive vessel unlike anything Maya had ever seen. What is that? she breathed. The ship's hull split open like a blooming flower, revealing a pulsing core of sickly green energy. 
Maya's blood ran cold as realization dawned. They're going to blanket the entire planet. As the Hirogen superweapon prepared to unleash its payload, Maya knew their last hope lay with Akron and the mysterious Tsar Kailini Codex. But with Zarak on the brink of annihilation and the galaxy teetering towards all-out war, would they find the answers in time? Time? The question burned in Maya's mind as she watched the Hirogen superweapon prepare to unleash devastation upon Zarek. A blinding flash erupted from the vessel's core. Maya shielded her eyes, bracing for the end. But it never came. The viewscreen flickered, then stabilized. Where the Hirogen fleet had been, a shimmering distortion now warped space itself. What just happened? Maya's assistant gasped. Before she could respond, her calm crackled to life. Dr. Gonzalez, this is Akron. We've bought you some time. Relief flooded through Maya. How? The Zarkalini Codex, Akron's voice held a note of awe. Its power is beyond anything we imagined. As Akron relayed the details of their harrowing journey through the quantum singularity, Maya's mind raced. The original pact between the Zarath and Dr. Romanova it was the key to unraveling the Inquisitor's bioweapon. Send me everything, Maya ordered, fingers flying across her console. We'll start synthesizing immediately. Hours blurred into days as Maya's team worked feverishly. Outside their makeshift lab, Zarek burned. Riots tore through the streets, fueled by panic and the Inquisitor's machinations. We have a cure, Maya announced, holding up a vial of shimmering liquid. But how do we distribute it in this chaos? The answer came in the form of Terran dropships screaming through Zarek's atmosphere. Captain Volkov's voice boomed over public address systems. Citizens of Zarek remain calm. We are here to help. Zasha materialized beside Maya, startling the exhausted scientist. Come, the assassin said. Our window is small. They raced through the streets, dodging plasma fire and rioters. Zasha's blades flashed, cutting down Inquisitor agents with lethal precision. Terran Marines secured a landing zone as medical ships touched down. Maya directed the distribution, her heart pounding as the experimental cure flowed into Zarek's water systems. For a moment, hope blossomed. Then a scream pierced the air. Contamination in Sector 7, a technician shouted. The cure, it's mutating. Horror gripped Maya as reports flooded in an entire district consumed by a nightmarish new strain of the bioweapon. Seal it off, she ordered, fighting back tears. We can't let it spread. Light years away, Akron stood before the charred remains of the Karajurn Citadel. High Confessor Malkar knelt before him, bound and defeated. You've lost, Akron said, his voice cold. Surrender the Inquisition, and you may yet live. Malkar spat blood his eyes burning with hatred. Fool, this is but the beginning. Our true weapon will cleanse the galaxy of your... A plasma bolt silenced him mid-sentence. Akron turned to see Princess Arya, a smoking pistol in her hand. Enough, she said. There's no more games, no more talk of weapons. This ends now. As Terran peacekeepers secured the Inquisitor's stronghold, Akron's calm chimed. Admiral Powell's hologram flickered to life. The situation on New Boston is deteriorating, Powell said, his face grim. Senator Ivanov's trial has sparked widespread unrest. If we don't act quickly, we may have a full-scale civil war on our hands. Akron's mind raced, weighing options. I have an idea, he said finally, but you're not going to like it. Powell raised an eyebrow. I'm listening. As Akron outlined his audacious plan, the fate of three empires hung in the balance. The Tsar Kilini Codex had given them a fighting chance, but the road ahead remained fraught with peril. The Tsar Kalinia Codex pulsed with otherworldly energy in Akron's hands as he strode through the halls of the Enduran Imperial Palace. Its power had stabilized the crisis on Zarek, but the true test lay ahead. Admiral Powell stood at a viewport, watching shuttles descend from orbit. His weathered face reflected the weight of impending decisions. They're here. Powell said, turning to face Akron. Emperor Kalar's delegation has arrived. Akron nodded, his voice low. And so begins the real work of peace. 
The summit chamber buzzed with tension. Terran and Hirogen dignitaries eyed each other warily, generations of conflict etched in their postures. At the center, Powell and Kalar sat across a polished table of Anduran heartwood. Your Majesty, Powell began, we stand at a crossroads. Kalar's eyes narrowed. Indeed, Admiral. The question is, which path shall we choose? Hours bled into days as they hammered out the accord, sweeping reforms for the Hirogen Empire, economic aid from the Terran Alliance, the Zarath, ever watchful, to ensure compliance. On the eve of the signing, Akron prowled the corridors, unease prickling his senses. A shadow moved, wrong angles, predatory intent. He lashed out, blades singing through the air. The would-be assassin crumpled, but more emerged from hidden passages. Alarms blared as Akron's calm crackled to life. Multiple hostiles, Zasha's voice taut with exertion. They're after Powell and Kalar. Akron sprinted towards the summit chamber, cutting down inquisitors with ruthless efficiency. He burst through the doors to chaos. Powell grappled with a black-clad figure, while Kalar shielded Princess Arya. Plasma bolts seared the air. Akron's blades flashed, and bodies fell. A scream cut through the din. Kalar stumbled, crimson blooming across his chest. Arya caught him as he fell. Father, she cried, cradling his head. Akron secured the room, his mind racing. This was no mere assassination attempt. It was a coup. Alarms blared throughout the complex. Reports flooded in. Hostages taken, including Dr. Gonzalez. A prototype warp drive, stolen. Zasha, Akron barked into his comm. Take a team and pursue. I'll coordinate from here. As Zasha's strike force gave chase, the truth unraveled. Colonel Graves, once Powell's trusted aide. Prince Valdrak, Kalar's exiled cousin. Betrayal from within both empires. The stolen ship streaked across the system, Zasha in hot pursuit. On Andorra, Akron monitored their progress, torn between duty and the unfolding drama in the summit chamber. Kalar, his life ebbing, gripped Arya's hand. My daughter, he wheezed. You must lead them now. Arya's eyes widened. Father, no! The future, Kalar insisted, depends on you both. His gaze found Powell, understanding passing between them. With a final rattling breath, Emperor Kalar of the Hirogen passed into history. Arya stood, her grief transmuting into steel determination. She faced the assembled delegates, her voice ringing clear. The old ways die with my father, she declared. Let a new age of peace begin. Across the void, Zasha's team breached the stolen vessel's hull. Alarms screamed as the prototype drive pulsed with unchecked power. Graves! Zasha shouted over the din. Power down the drive or we all die! The renegade colonel sneered, his finger hovering over the overload trigger. Better oblivion than your so-called peace! Time slowed, Zasha's arm blurred, a single shot rang out. Graves collapsed, the drive stabilizing as his dead hand fell away. Prince Valdrak, seeing his co-conspirator fall, raised his hands in surrender. On Endura, Akron watched the feed. Arya and Powell stood side by side, addressing their people. A new accord, forged in blood and sacrifice. As celebrations erupted across three empires, Akron found himself adrift. The Zarath had shaped galactic events from the shadows for centuries. Now, thrust into the light, their path forward remained uncertain. He gazed at the Tsar Kilini Codex, power thrumming beneath its surface. What role would the Zarath play in this new era? Only time would tell. The Tsar Kilini Codex pulsed with diminishing energy as Akron set it reverently upon its pedestal. He turned to face the assembled Zarath elders, their faces etched with centuries of secrecy and shadow. Our role changes, Akron declared his voice echoing through the cavernous chamber. No longer will we shape galactic events from darkness. Murmurs rippled through the gathering. Zasha stepped forward, her posture taut with anticipation. You have a task for me, she stated, more observation than question. Akron nodded. Lead our first integration force. Immerse yourself among humans and hirogens. We must understand to be understood. Light years away, on the newly christened capital world of New Andura, 
Princess Arya stood before a sea of faces. Hyrogen citizens, their eyes wide with hope and trepidation, filled the sprawling plaza. The age of imperial rule ends today. Arya's voice rang clear through hovering amplifiers. I stand before you, not as your predetermined sovereign, but as the first elected empress of our reformed imperium. Cheers erupted, tinged with the uncertainty of monumental change. Admiral Powell watched from the sidelines, a data pad clutched in his hand. His calm chimed softly. Ambassador Powell, he answered, the new title still unfamiliar on his tongue. Sir, Captain Volkov's hologram flickered to life. The joint expedition is prepared for launch. We await your final authorization. Powell's eyes swept over the assembled dignitaries. Proceed, Captain. Show them what our unified strength can achieve. As Volkov's fleet slipped into the inky depths of uncharted space, a lone ship drifted through the cosmic hinterlands. War Master Kalruk, his face a mask of bitter purpose, gazed upon the ghostly silhouette of an impossibly vast structure. The architect array, he breathed, fingers trailing across ancient control panels. With this, we will rewrite history itself. Alarms blared across the derelict station. Kalruk spun, eyes wide as holographic displays blazed to life. A small craft, battered but unmistakably Zareth in design, limped into sensor range. Survivor, Kalruk snarled. Mercenaries, destroy that ship. No witnesses. Zasha gritted her teeth as her stolen vessel shuddered under withering fire. Warning lights bathed the cockpit in crimson. With a silent prayer to forgotten gods, she reached for the ejection controls. The void of space embraced her as the ship disintegrated. Zasha tumbled, propelled by maneuvering thrusters, praying her stealth systems would mask her life pod from Kalruk's sensors. Back on New Andura, Akron's calm crackled with static. A ghostly image of Zasha flickered into view. Architect Array, her voice faded in and out. Rewrite space-time. Earth itself at risk. The transmission cut out. Akron's blood ran cold. He turned to the assembled Zarath elders, their faces mirroring his own grave expression. Prepare the sacred rites, he commanded. We must awaken the Vornithakan altars. As the Zarath prepared for their most hallowed ritual, Captain Volkov stood on the bridge of his flagship. Stars streaked past viewports as the joint expedition pushed deeper into unexplored territory. A proximity alert shattered the contemplative silence. Volkov's eyes widened as swirling eddies of distorted space-time engulfed the fleet. All hands brace for impact! The vessel lurched, artificial gravity fluctuating wildly. As quickly as it began, the maelstrom subsided. Volkov staggered to his feet, taking in the scene of chaos around him. Status report. His first officer's face was ashen. Sir, we've lost all contact with Alliance space, and our power reserves, they're draining rapidly. Volkov's eyebrows furrowed. He keyed the ship-wide calm. This is your captain speaking. We face an unprecedented crisis, but we will endure. Hyrogen, human. Today, we are one crew. As Volkov rallied his people, Zasha drifted through the cosmic void. Her stealth pod systems flickered, struggling against the array's energy-draining field. In the distance, a nondescript transport ship slipped into view. Zasha allowed herself a grim smile. The first step in infiltrating Kalruk's mercenary ranks lay before her. All she had to do was survive long enough to take it. Zasha's fingers danced across the mercenary ship's control panel, slipping past layers of security protocols. The vessel shuddered as it entered the swirling gases of the Rakashi Nebula. Behind her, Akron stood motionless, his eyes closed in concentration as he communed with the Tsar Kilini Codex. We're through their outer perimeter, Zasha reported, her voice low. No sign they've detected us yet. Akron's eyes snapped open. Good. The Codex has revealed Kalruk's exact coordinates. Prepare the strike team. The ship's hold thrummed with tension as elite Zarath operatives checked weapons and psionic amplifiers. Zasha felt the familiar itch of adrenaline flooding her system. A proximity alarm blared. Zasha's hands flew across the controls. Mercenary patrol, dead ahead! 
Evasive maneuvers, Akron ordered calmly. The ship barrel rolled, narrowly avoiding a barrage of plasma fire. Zasha gritted her teeth, pushing the engines to their limits as she weaved through the nebula's treacherous currents. Multiple contacts, she shouted. They found us! Akron's voice rang out over the ship's comm. All hands, prepare for combat insertion. We fight our way to Cal Rook. The hold depressurized with a hiss. Zareth operatives surged into the void, psionic shields flickering to life around them. Zasha brought their ship into a steep dive, aiming for the heart of Kalruk's fortified base. Crimson beams lanced through space as the Zareth strike force engaged the mercenary defenders. Akron led the charge, the codex pulsing with otherworldly energy as he deflected incoming fire. They breached the station's outer hull in a shower of sparks and twisted metal. Alarms wailed as Zarath and mercenaries clashed in close-quarters combat. Zasha's blades sang, cutting down foes with lethal precision. This way, Akron shouted, the codex guiding him through the labyrinthine structure. They fought their way deeper, leaving a trail of destruction in their wake. Zasha felt a familiar presence ahead, a dark, pulsing energy that could only be Kalruk. The final blast door exploded inward. Zasha rolled into the chamber, coming face to face with the renegade warmaster. Kalruk stood before a towering construct of impossible geometry, the architect array. You're too late, Kalruk snarled, dark psionic energy crackling around him. Zasha lunged, her blades clashing against Kalruk's psionic shields. They dueled with furious intensity, their movements blurring as they tapped into abilities beyond mortal ken. Akron and the remaining Zarath battled the last of Kalruk's defenders, inching closer to the array's control systems. Zasha saw a flicker of doubt cross Kalruk's face as his forces crumbled. With a roar of desperation, Kalruk unleashed a torrent of raw psionic power. Zasha felt her defenses buckle, her body screaming in agony as the energy tore through her. But in that moment of overextension, she saw her opening. Zasha's blade found its mark plunging deep into Kalruk's chest. The Warmaster's eyes widened in shock, dark energy dissipating around him. As he fell, his hand slammed down on the array's activation panel. The chamber filled with blinding light. Reality itself seemed to warp and twist as the array surged to life. Akron! Zasha cried out, her body racked with pain from Kalruk's final assault. We have to shut it down! Akron stood before the pulsing heart of the array, the codex held high. His face was a mask of unshakable focus as he spoke words in an ancient tongue. No, Zasha whispered, realizing his intent. There must be another way. But Akron's decision was made. As the failsafe protocol initiated, his body began to disintegrate, merging with the array's impossible energies. A deafening roar filled the chamber as space-time itself convulsed. Zasha felt herself being thrown backward, consciousness fading as the array imploded in a maelstrom of cosmic forces. Across the galaxy, on New Endura and Earth alike, panic erupted as reality flickered and distorted. Citizens watched in horror as chronotrauma effects rippled through the streets, glimpses of alternate timelines bleeding through the fabric of existence. In the depths of uncharted space, Captain Volkov clung to his command chair as the anomaly zone around them erupted in chaos. Warning klaxons blared as the ship's systems overloaded. All hands, brace for impact, Volkov shouted, watching helplessly as his fleet scattered like leaves in a cosmic wind. When the turbulence finally subsided, Volkov found his vessel adrift in an unfamiliar star system. The comm crackled to life with distress signals from other ships, human and hirogen alike, flung to the far corners of known space. As the dust settled and the immediate crisis passed, a pall of unease settled over the Allied worlds. The near brush with cosmic annihilation left deep scars in the collective psyche of both humanity and the Hirogen. On New Andorra, Princess Arya stood before a sea of worried faces, both human and Hirogen. The weight of leadership pressed down upon her as never before. We have weathered a storm unlike any in our history, she began, her voice steady despite the turmoil in her heart. But in doing so, we have lost more than we could have imagined. In the shadows of the royal palace, a lone figure listened intently. 
Zasha, her body still bearing the wounds of her duel with Kal Rook, felt the weight of Akron's sacrifice pressing down upon her. As Arya spoke of unity and resilience, Zasha detected undercurrents of fear and suspicion rippling through the crowd. She knew that the true test of their alliance was only beginning. In the depths of space, something ancient stirred. The array's death throes had awakened a slumbering force beyond mortal comprehension. As it unfurled vast, unseen limbs, the fledgling alliance remained oblivious to the greater threat now arising. Zasha's hand tightened on the hilt of her blade. The Zareth had paid a terrible price, but their duty was far from finished. Whatever came next, she would ensure Akron's sacrifice was not in vain. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.